Today we're going to talk about diseases that affect our deer population. My guest this week is wildlife veterinarian Dr. Charlie Bonson. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Charlie, in the last two months, we've had a lot of reports of dead deer on the landscape. Uh, what's going on? So we've been monitoring uh, what's really shaped up to be a pretty significant uh, EHD year. Um, this is a viral disease that's transmitted by midges, which are these little biting nelsiums um, that, that rely on uh, stagnant water, wet organic material to hatch. Um, but unfortunately, when a number of factors line up, you can have these very significant outbreaks where these midges transmit the virus among uh, deer. Um, you know, it affects all, uh, all cervids, but white-tailed deer are far and away the most uh, sensitive in terms of mortality. And, and what we find is that in a, in a bad year, we can have pretty dramatic mortality in localized areas. Charlie, what's it take to run its cycle? Yeah, um, so, you know, things that lend itself to a bad year are, um, are, you know, prolonged drought, which we've seen, and then a long, mild fall. Um, and what really ends up ending uh, an outbreak is, is a series of hard frosts that kill that midge. Um, you know, our average frost in Bismarck is um, September 26th, and we're well beyond that. Whether you're a hunter or just out and about, what should you do if you find a dead deer? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, whether it's EHD or anything else, uh, we depend heavily on the public uh, to let us know what they're seeing out there so we can track this. Um, and the public has been indispensable for us to monitor this current outbreak. Um, if you do find a, a fresh deer, the most convenient thing to do is to log that report on our online form. Um, it's gf.nd.gov slash mortality report with a hyphen in between. Um, you can also just contact your local office or your local game warden and they can uh, direct you to the right, the right form. Charlie, deer seasons, early November, uh, some of these areas got hit pretty hard. Is Game of Fish doing anything? Yeah, we started monitoring this outbreak uh, beginning of August and, and th through reports, through getting our hands on and testing quite a lot of deer, uh, we've tried to track and get the best idea of, of where the most heavily affected areas are. And so um, based off of, again, public reports and testing and, and wardens doing uh, surveillance for the disease, Hunters with antlered whitetail, antlerless whitetail, any antlered and any antlerless licenses from a list of units um, can choose to return their licenses for a refund. Um, in order to see that current list, visit our website at gf.nd.gov. You know, I would encourage people to do a lot of homework before making that decision, you know, scout the area. Um, in, in past years, we tend to find that e EHD is very spotty, so one drainage will be very heavy heavily impacted and the next drainage over you won't even know and uh, you won't notice a difference. Uh, so do your do, do your uh, homework before making an informed decision but uh, just know that that is an option. Charlie let's switch gears and move on to chronic waste and disease. What is chronic waste and disease in deer? Yeah so chronic waste and disease is um, it's different from EHD. It's this neurologic disease that's caused by something other than a bacteria or virus. Um, you know, and, and what we know is that relative to EHD, CWD is an extremely slow moving disease, um, but unfortunately once it becomes really heavily established in a population, it persists year after year after year. So that's why the department spends a lot of time trying to prevent that, that end scenario from, from coming. Um, so as far as the disease, it's this, this, this disease that um, affects really all of our cervid species, um, but through contact with an infected animal, bodily fluids from an infected animal, or even um, an area contaminated by a carcass, um, a deer becomes infected, and then about you know 18 to 20 months afterwards, it develops this real severe neurologic disease, um, and and is invariably fatal. They always die from it. Um, however, you know the other thing with CWD is before they even get to that point, they start to decline in their function, and so uh, among positive deer, we see higher levels of predation, higher uh, chance of getting hit by a car. CWD is relatively low prevalence in North Dakota. Yeah, um, you know, we first detected it in, in North Dakota in, in Unit 3F2 in 2009. Um, and again, getting on that, that time scale thing, we've seen just a slow smolder there. And so now, um, down in that unit, mule deer, it's about 5%. Whitetail is something like 2 to 3%. Um, but unfortunately, we are seeing this slow increase. 
Um, we have uh, you know, even lower prevalence in a number of other units. Um, what that tells us is that really the opportunity is there uh, to try to keep it low uh, before it gets out of control. Charlie, what can hunters do to help uh, manage and stop the spread of chronic wasting disease? Yeah, uh, so you know, our, our only hope uh, with CWD is uh, by getting widespread buy-in amongst our hunting public and, and really anybody who has a stake in, in deer and wildlife in North Dakota. Um, so among hunters, there's a number of things you can do. Uh, one is to just be aware of the regulations in the unit where you're hunting. Um, those primarily involve baiting restrictions or transportation restrictions. Uh, beyond that, uh, we conduct surveillance um, in a number of units every year and, and surveillance is really important for us to know where the disease is and how common it is and so please help you know, participate in our, our surveillance if we're conducting it in a year, um, in that year. Um, another thing is like we said to report dead and sick wildlife if you see them promptly that helps us as well um, and then you know far and away the biggest thing you can do as a hunter is to continue to hunt in areas um, you know where you where you normally hunt um, you know the the hunter's gun is our most effective tool in managing this disease so please you know continue to do what you're doing and uh, and help us keep this thing in check and part of the, that is by the deer head collection sites. Explain that a little bit. You know, hunter harvest is what keeps our populations in check and what helps us remove positive animals through, through gen general hunting pressure every year. Um, beyond that, surveillance is, is critical. And so if we're conducting surveillance in an area where you're hunting, there's a number of collection sites across that unit. Um, so you can uh, drop off the head for, for sampling, you know, follow instructions that you can find at that site or on our webpage. Um, you can also, depending on where you're hunting, you can bring that to uh, you know, a local taxidermist who's participating in, in surveillance or even a, um, a, a regional or a, a district office who can collect samples. Just be cognizant of uh, transportation restrictions and um, you know, if they're in place in your unit. Speaking of transportation, uh, this year there's one regulation change for the deer season, deer gun season. Explain that a little bit. Yeah, um, so we know that the disease is especially concentrated in the brain and spinal column. And so we had a, a change to our restrictions this, u this year that allows you to leave essentially the brain and spinal column at the kill site regardless of where you're hunting in North Dakota. Um, so what you would do is, is uh, tag that deer as you normally would, you know, put the tag around an antler or through a slit in the ear of a doe. Um, you take pictures of it, you know, one of the, the filled out tag close up with your cell phone with the date and time uh, turned on. Um, and then one of the, of the carcass, you know, uh, zoomed out so you can see the entire carcass. Uh, you'll then remove that antler or ear and then you can leave the head and spinal column and then just collect, you know, bone it out, quarter it out, um, and then accompany that, that meat with the carcass tag and then the, the ear or the antler uh, to the final uh, destination. And then just make sure to have those pictures on your cell phone ready to go uh, if, a, if a game warden stops you. Charlie, let's talk baiting. Uh, explain. Yeah, so baiting is one strategy to reduce the risk of CWD transmitting among deer. Um, you know, we know that this is an infectious disease that can be spread among animals directly, but also through their bodily fluids, urine, saliva, feces. Um, and so we have to look at what we as hunters do that maybe put animals at higher risk of becoming infected. And of course, baiting is one of them. Um, you know, baiting brings a number of animals that aren't related into close proximity, and it also increases the chances that an animal is gonna consume feed that's infected with bodily fluids. Um, so in areas where, we, where we've detected CWD or, or there's a strong chance of CWD already existing, uh, we restrict the practice of, of baiting as a legal harvest method. So we know that uh, you know, this doesn't stop all congregations of animals, but it's, it's one meaningful way that we as hunters can reduce these unnatural congregations of, of deer, you know, bringing more animals in a close proximity and then a lot of different animals in close proximity, you know, a small portion of which might be uh, having this disease and, and spreading it to other animals. Charlie, should a hunter be concerned about potentially harvesting a deer with CWD? The risk of uh, CWD to human health from consuming contaminated meat is considered to be very low, but it can't be completely dismissed. And so the CDC recommends that if you're hunting in an area where CWD is known to exist, uh, you get that animal tested and you wait for, their, for negative results before consuming the meat. Final thoughts, Charlie. 
The biggest thing that hunters can do is know the regulations where you're hunting, participate in the surveillance program if, if we're testing deer in your area, and then of course continue to go hunting. A lot of great information, Charlie. Thank you.